that's where it came from. Mm. That's cool though. Make sure you're not ignorant on a lot of levels. Because a lot of people are very ignorant on a lot of levels. Not that, that ignorance means that they're bad people, but they're just ignorant. Everybody's ignorant in some way. No doubt. And so you think, uh, so, so basically, in other words, having this, this mixed nationality is definitely a, a good thing, and is what you're saying. It's a good thing. I think it, it simply puts a lot of things in perspective. Mm. You know what I mean? We all got red blood, man. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> you know what I mean? No it's doubt. Just like, and it, I think it, it makes culture seem weird. You know? I think if you're mixed anywhere, whatever you're mixed with, you like don't feel like you exactly belong to any culture. Like, mm. you know, definitely like, oh, um, that's my culture. Yep. So it puts you in this um, your own little your own little world. You know, where you kind of can fit in anywhere, but you don't completely fit in anywhere. Yeah. 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 Tell, tell, tell me about where you grew up. I mean, well, I was born you said in Georgia, but I was raised in a little town that nobody knows of called Pritchardville, South Carolina. But where, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> where I went to school um, because it was the closest school in our district was Hilton Head, South Carolina, mm. which is like the second richest place in the country per capita. Okay. And and you know, I was from the trailer parks, so you know, I would go from the trailer parks to the rich island, and it's just, man, it's a culture shock, you know. Yeah. To like. To become friends with a lot of those people, go to their house, and like just be like, what is this? You know, this ten million dollar house you got a yacht outside. It's you know ten million dollars, and this is your second house. You know that kind of stuff just blew my mind. You know, because it was a big deal to us when I was like thirteen when we got we got a triple wide. You know, mm. that was like that was everything. You know? we were so we were rich. We made. We it. were rich from where we were. You know, we went from single wide to triple wide. And uh, for for where I was from, that was that was rich. Mm. That wasn't rich at all, you know. What I mean, in perspective. Yeah. So it's just it's funny to, to see that and to grow up in the country, but also live right next to the city, which is Savannah. You know, and go to school in the richest place. It's just a culture shock. You get to experience all that at the same time. You know, yeah. it's weird. In it Boston, kinda, Massachusetts. Kind of opens your eyes. You get it a lot. <laughs>
you say, yo, what up? Did you? What up? What up? Skip the turtle. 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 Uh, I think music is, is about celebration, and for me, it's about bringing everybody together. So, where, where did the music come into the picture? I mean, you mentioned where you grew up and, you know, the environment and so forth. You know, my parents listened to good music when I was growing up. That helps. Um, and, you know, my mom's side of the family always was giving me um, Calypso mixtapes and Island mixtapes. And I was listening to that since I was a kid, so mm. I grew up with that. But I, I, can, I can remember all the way to when I was probably eight. It's my first memories of as soon as my parents would, would leave the house, go outside, and cut the yard, or do anything. I remember putting on Stevie uh, Wonder records and just singing to them, you know, trying to learn the Stevie Wonder songs to the T. Now, where, and, where, where did you hear that, like, hear of Stevie, though? Like, if your parents and your family was playing all this well, my dad island. Was, my dad listened to Motown, okay. and you know, Motown like to the tee from one end to the other. Uh, you know, he loved beach music and Motown music. It's just, and so this to put it in perspective, like I was listening to these on vinyl. Mm. Like I remember listening to Stevie on vinyl and uh, just singing to him nonstop. You know, and as soon as somebody was coming back up to the house, I would cut it off and pretend. That I wasn't yeah, singing. you're listening to yeah. the other stuff. <laughs> well, not that I was listening to the other stuff, but I didn't want nobody knowing I was singing. Ah, okay. I was just really shy. Mm. So you know, I used to sing, sing my butt off. The second I got any free time to myself, I would just sing my butt off, and anybody else would come around and pretend like I wasn't singing. And I was really shy about singing most of my whole life. So. <laughs>
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like that was like the big, big alternative. Like um, that's when everything hit. That was alternative. You know, like back when Nirvana came out, Bush okay. came yep. out, yep. And Oasis. Whole, yeah, Oasis. One no, well, you know. Well, that was my jam. Yeah, that, that was my jam too. For like you know a year. A nice year. Yeah, right. Maybe, maybe not even a year. You know, and I remember I went from that to like straight up hardcore hip hop for the longest. But then as I started getting into high school, I was just like, I went like back. Mm -hmm. Everything was like jazz. And I went really heavy into jazz and then really heavy into funk. And all the stuff that I listened to as a kid that, you know, I grew up listening to, is kind of what I listen to now, you know? Hmm. So I did a little, I did a, did a, a whole circle back basically. Step. Yes, yeah. and now when I listen to stuff, I love Motown, James Brown, Ray Charles, um, Donny Hathaway. Stevie Wonder, you know, Harry Belafonte, Tito Puente, okay, and, and okay. stuff like that, you know, that's, so I kind of like did a big circle in my life when it comes to music and what I really like. You mentioned you just, you, you went in high school, you, uh, one of the first things that you went back to was jazz. Yeah. Why, why jazz? I mean, that. Uh, well, you know, I was, I was an inspiring musician at the time. Okay, so that's when you really were getting into. That's when I was, you know, like, I want to be a musician. You know, I made up my mind when I was like 14, 13, and that's what I was going to do. I was going to be a musician. Mm. But by this time, you know, 16, 15 years old, I, I started thinking about it logically. And uh, if you want to get good at anything, you listen to the people that are good at it, you know. And all the great musicians where I was from, all the older cats that I really looked up to because they were great players, were like, you can play jazz, you can play anything. And I remember... Um, because there's an intelligence to jazz. Most people, most people listen to jazz and uh, they don't hear it at all. It's just noise. A lot of jazz to them is just noise, you know, it's just And they don't hear it. Um, and uh, you really have to dive into it deep until the chords and the notes pop out of you and you hear it like a language, you know? Um, and it's, it's not pop at all. It's, it's something where you have to be intelligent about music to enjoy. You have to understand music to a point to enjoy. You know, I, I guess it's the difference between kids want to eat macaroni and cheese and hot dogs, you know? Um, but an adult might want, might want salmon with, you know, some crazy seasoning on it. You know, but a kid would be like, oh, that's disgusting. No. You know, you're eating squash and salmon, yeah. and, but you acquire the taste for it as you get older. And, you know, I think that's how it was. If you listen to old music, old music was intelligent. You know, it, it had a lot of depth to it. Music these days is not that intelligent at all. Mm -hmm. Like pop music, very simple, very few chords that are intelligent. And anything with depth is just like lacking depth. It's just really simple and, and mundane. It's, and people that get to be an adult level never even get to that that depth of music as what well is jazz, you know, to appreciate it and to enjoy it. You know? Which makes it hard as a musician. Well well I was gonna say with that said now.
but you'll be trying, you'll be trying all the damn day. I don't want to hear it, I can't get it, I can't get it from now. 